Let's kick this off for the summer round. So welcome everyone to the final meetup of 2023 for the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel user group. Uh, we're excited to have uh, Alex back with us for a second time around here, and he's going to give us his presentation in just a bit once I've gone through, of course, and uh, and run off the uh, the sponsor slides that we have for today. So, um, oh, that's definitely not the right title on that one. I'm going to have to get that one changed. I think that was from our last one, but uh, there we go. So first off, a uh, big thanks to the sponsors that make all this stuff happen. Uh, Skillwave, of course, is my training company uh, that looks after uh, teaching you how to, to work with Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI, and all good things in Excel and Power BI. Uh, both myself and Matt Allington work really hard to try and develop some amazing content and to put things out uh, in that space. Uh, Excel Guru is the power or is the uh, parent company of Skillwave and also the company that builds and Ships Monkey Tools, which is an Excel add-in to help you build better data models faster. Our next meetup, so we have coming up in 2024, I'm super excited to be welcoming my friend John Peltier. Uh, he's going to be coming and talking about enhancing your Excel charting experience. This is going to be the first of a series of sessions which are focusing on Excel add-ins in Excel. So things that are actually built by the community to enhance the Excel experience. You can make them similar to custom visuals in Power BI, um, but uh, allow you to do a lot, uh, lot more things inside the Excel space. After that, for the first time, actually, I'm uh, super excited to welcome my friend Mike Carlo, who's going to be coming and talking about reporting design frameworks in Power BI. Um, so don't forget to uh, to register for both of those and make sure that we uh, we see you in 2024. Um, just a quick note on Monkey Tools. Uh, the last sort of build update that I'm featuring, although there have been a couple of minor updates since this, is our November 2014th release. Um, inside this, we actually uh, changed up some of our Biblio tagging menu. We've now made this available to everybody on a free license to make it very, very easy for people to insert dynamic tags into things they store in the Biblio Monkey. And therefore, when you inject these things back into your models, like DAX measures or queries, it actually prompts you with contextual help. Um, we have more data model tagging options, a whole bunch of them for granular tagging now, um, and they provide shorter list during insert, which is a lot easier to actually manage. And this is something that I actually drove myself when I was going through here and found that this made a big difference. The Excel context menu has been expanded. Pro users can inject queries and measures right from the Excel grid without even opening BiblioMonkey, um, which is always helpful. And of course, there's always bug fixes was one of the standard things we ship in every build. If you haven't checked out Monkey Tools, you should definitely do so. Uh, my last um, kickoff date for 2023 on my boot camps is next week on the 13th of December. Uh, we have two different boot camps here that I'm focusing on. The big key for these things is they're targeted different audiences. The fundamentals is really about mastering some formulas and pivot tables and data visualization and getting ready to go so you can go and impress your boss or your colleagues with your Excel skill set. Each of these programs comes with access to my Ask Ken sessions. We do two of these a month that are two hours long where you can ask anything you want and I will help you put these things into play. Um, so this is a great place if you want to go and up your Excel game and you feel like you're missing some pieces along the way. Or if you happen to be in a scenario where you're actually pretty comfortable with everything that's going on and you're ready to go and take your skills to the next level, you may be interested in my self-service BI bootcamp. This is my flagship product that we deal with here where we focus on Power Query, Power Pivot, Power BI. Uh, we give you a Monkey Tools Pro license as well as the Ask Ken sessions to really help you up your game and, uh, and make some amazing business intelligence solutions. Again, the last kickoff date for this for this year is December 13th, and of course, there will be new ones in the following year as well. Um, this meetup, along with all meetups, is going to be recorded, it's being recorded right now, and will be hosted on the Skillwave YouTube channel. It typically takes me 24 to 48 hours to get these produced and uploaded, and once we do, we will definitely make sure that you get a notification through the meetups that you've actually signed up for. Our meetup will send you an invite directly. Uh, we've got a couple of monkey shorts videos, or at least one that we're uh, we're fo focusing on here. Um, it was comparing versus the prior row in Power Query, a tricky little technique there. If you're interested in checking that out, this video is less than three minutes, as are all monkey shorts video, and you can find the full list there. Finally, the last thing I'll mention here is if you're interested in getting involved in coming and speaking to our user group, fill out this little form that we have here and we will get in touch with you and get you on our stage. We are um, already planning well into 2024, which is fantastic, but we're always looking for new speakers. So definitely hit us up if you'd like to come and try your hand at speaking to a very friendly and uh, honestly um, engaged user group that we have here. So, and that 
is it for me, Alex? I am going to uh, to stop sharing my screen here, and I'm going to turn it over to you to uh, to give us the dashboard cemetery walk. So this is going to be uh, excellent stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I'm happy to speak at uh, this meetup, and uh, let's start. Uh, um, I launch my screen and. Let's start from the beginning. So my name is Alex. I'm founder and chief executive at uh, DataSpeak Incorporated. And uh, uh, in a few words about me, uh, I've been working in the field of business intelligence for the last 14 years. So I started before Power BI from uh, Excel pivot tables, SQL Server and uh, SharePoint services. And uh, my personal passion is dashboard design and uh, development. And uh, I'm still developing mostly with Power BI for different industries. And uh, my company provides uh, full stack uh, services from data warehousing uh, to dashboard design. And uh, I work mostly as a trainer, uh, as a consultant, and uh, I publish books on uh, data visualization, dashboard design, and uh, um, in the beginning of uh, the next year, my next book, Data Visualization with Power BI, will be released uh, in O'Reilly Media. And uh, uh, my recent contribution to Business intelligence industry, industry is data visualization award, which we founded uh, to um, to enrich our analytics community and uh, unite people from data science, data analytics, and uh, people from creative industries, data journalists, data storytellers. And uh, we found it two separate nominations for dashboards and uh, uh, data storytelling. And really, we um, it, it was in uh, February, and we uh, made this award and uh, conference. And really, uh, we find great uh, solutions and great uh, speakers, experts, and. Uh, this year we will make this annual conference and uh, um, annual data visualization award. So I'm trying to unite people from different uh, different technology stacks, different industries, and uh, involve in, into our analytics world. And uh, uh, today uh, I will tell you seven stories and show you seven dashboards. Uh, First about uh, wage fund, uh, second pharmaceutical sales, uh, sales funnel analytics, uh, digital marketing uh, indic indicators, logistics, uh, human resources, and uh, brokering. And uh, I will ask you uh, after after each of this uh, session, uh, I will ask you to make your suggestion, to make your bets. Uh, has this uh, dashboard uh, died or survived? Because maybe you are familiar with this problem that uh, the half of our um, analytics, uh, analytical solutions uh, is uh, dying in the first year and uh, they uh, become not, uh, not demanded. And I will share uh, with you this experience, this fails and uh, sometimes success stories. And um, mm, what's, what's the problem? Uh, and so uh, co uh, make your comments if you are familiar with, if you or your friend <laughs> is familiar with this uh, problem that uh, our stakeholders, uh, business uh, um decision makers uh, our clients our uh, managers they have expectations about modern dashboard about uh, data analytics power bi fabric whatever that it will be uh, interactive screen uh, 
artificial intelligence, uh, but in the reality, uh, even uh, not not even five or ten years ago, really this is an example of recent uh, dashboard that uh, works in a um, big corporation. But of course, this is uh, maybe a uh, very, very bad example, but really it's, uh, it, it, it exists. But sometimes uh, companies use dashboard tools, uh, Power BI, Tableau, Click, and uh, a lot of uh, modern tools, but they uh, develop these dashboards looking at their previous experience with Excel pivot tables, uh, keynote slides, and uh, they get something useless, uh, something messy, and uh, that, that's a problem. And uh, even if it's not so ugly, but we may get uh, tons of bar charts, tons of tables, and uh, really business looking at uh, these dashboards. Uh, sometimes my customers say, please make me one pager PDF or three slides of pre presentation, but I don't want to use this messy dashboard. So this is for analysts, uh, use your tools, but uh, as a decision maker, I want to get something simple, something clear. And uh, that's why a lot of dashboards are dying in the corporate world. Uh, so that's my my personal experience and really a lot of our projects has that and dashboards were, were not updated, uh, whatever. And uh, so in the beginning, I have a simple question to you. Uh, please um, tell me what is your best database tool? Are you using Power BI or Tableau or maybe uh, Microsoft Excel. So, and uh, what is may, may, you may join our conversation about this problem. So, what's the problem? Is it a tool or is it um, data literacy? Is it a lack of data literacy uh, for our stakeholders? So, what's what is your opinion and uh, what is your favorite? Uh, a data visualization tool. And I will come back to Power BI. Oh, a client had main sales reports once a month. So once a month, uh, it's not so bad. Uh, I have a client who looks at uh, his financial reports once a quarter uh, when it's too, too late to increase indicators. Shiny, uh, Power BI. Okay, so uh, mostly Power BI. And uh, let's continue. And um, I will share my screen again. Oh, uh, and uh, now I will tell you who. Not, not even tell you how to survive, uh, but uh, tell some stories and uh, you will uh, make a decision. Uh, has it dead or survived? The first example, uh, we uh, developed this simple um, dashboard for uh, CNB uh, department comp compensations and uh, uh, benefits. And that's how it was looking. It is a Excel, Microsoft Excel file, and uh, I have my slicers for division. Uh, so my wage spendings for workforce management, logistic department, sales force, and uh, by month, by uh, items, salary, bonus. Uh, civil contracts and uh, different indicators and uh, uh, this data uh, so this is initial data but it was um, transformed into 
play table and uh, update it manually month by month and provided uh, this brief overview for company um, stakeholders. And uh, it was a temporary solution uh, while company has changed their uh, old financial system to new uh, complex ERP uh, solution. And uh, for a while, just, mm, just maybe three, four months, uh, they used this Excel template. And how do you think, uh, are they still using this Excel template or they use their uh, modern ERP system? And they have buried this old fashioned dashboard. What's your opinion? Still using another opinions? Yeah, uh, to be honest, uh, they failed. Uh, to implement their new ERP system and uh, develop some custom solution. But this pretty simple dashboard um, is clear for any financial person how to add new data, how to press refresh and uh, get new data and <laughs> make a screenshot uh, and put this uh, slide into presentation. But really, it's uh, this template is still living for about four, five years. And uh, I, of, of course, it has some modification, but uh, I show you just general idea. And really, um, this slicers feature made the wow effect five years ago and now this company says that they have they they achieved their digital transformation they have big data dashboard microsoft microsoft power platform but uh, their microsoft power platform is this uh, excel and you were right this dashboard has survived uh, and it's still living Another one example uh, of for pharmaceutical company, and uh, they during the pandemic they uh, decided to analyze their sales force performance uh, in a remote mode. So before they had uh, in person contacts with uh, medical clinics departments and uh, promote their uh, drugs. But uh, during the pandemic, they switched to online communications, video calls, phone calls, and uh, they had uh, another patterns uh, in Salesforce performance. And uh, but the goal was to provide clear overview. One second. Let me find this. Now. Oh. I tried to show another one example. Let me check. One second. That's the correct version. Oh, uh, it's uh, okay. It's uh, it's not actual version, but let me briefly, uh, so it's not translated in, in English, mm, but I will briefly show you that we have a lot of uh, interactions by uh, regions, by customer segment, uh, correlations between um, customer segments, regions, sales teams. We can filter anywhere type of communications department and even I can select any <laughs> different filters and see nothing at this dashboard and uh, mm, I can analyze by contacts frequency uh, duration uh, per 
Salesforce performance, a lot of indicators, uh, whatever I want. And uh, the author of this dashboard uh, came to company. Uh, so the target audience was uh, regional manager uh, for this uh, pharmaceutical company. And he tried to understand what does it mean? And how do you think uh, has this sophisticated analytical dashboard survived? Or so was it demanded by uh, chief executive or or not? How do you think was this deep analytical dashboard uh, demanded? Yeah, uh, again, you are right, because uh, manager said, uh, what is it? I don't understand how to use it. And uh, please uh, make me three or one pager or maximum three pages with uh, your uh, conclusions, figures. And I don't want to, to spend my time you know, how to work with this sophisticated tool. And uh, uh, the similar project when and uh, after that we have redesigned and this data, uh, this dashboard, this um, overloaded dashboard in a single screen, uh, one pager as uh, as uh, this manager asked. And the second iteration of this project uh, looked like this. So we have uh, our sales target. We have our com net networking communication indicators, and we have a key uh, metric of positive responses and uh, contacts per day. And that's our European uh, region. And overall sales uh, target uh, is good. We have. 101%. But we have a lot of red dots. And when I press any dot, I will I will filter. Yes, this is Helsinki. And uh, my sales target is not achieved. But my contact target, my communication target is, is exceeded. And uh, almost everywhere we when we have uh, failed sales target, we have uh, such a problem that we talk too much. For example, networking 110%, sales 94. Again, uh, 70 sometimes. I'm trying to find different. Yeah, another one example. So we have good uh, speaking uh, results, but not not for sales. And uh, we have ranking by sales teams, and uh, this is outsider team. And uh, also we can analyze uh, the best and worst sales persons. For example, our worst, uh, our outsider, one of outsiders who has rank 45 has uh, these indicators and we can see cities where he works in uh, Istanbul. So Istanbul is good. Berlin uh, is also good and he ha has good indicators. But what's the difference between uh, good and, and bad uh, salespersons? This outsider has 10% of positive response and uh, his neighbor has uh, 14, 10%, but leaders has 49% of positive responses and they may not achieve a uh, networking target, but they always exceed uh, sales target, 46 response, uh, response rate. And uh, this may be obvious insight, which uh, we uh, find here that we need to improve not the frequency of contacts, not, not call duration, but just this positive response rate. 
and uh, that was the key driver of uh, salesperson in, uh, training how to increase their sales. And that's what uh, we explained uh, with using the dashboard for company top managers. And uh, how do you think has this dashboard survived or also died? Make your bets. Um, yes, according to my storyline, I would uh, say that this improved dashboard uh, has survived. But uh, this dashboard also has died because of data integration problems. And uh, when uh, this, so there was there were sophisticated data flows uh, from different uh, data sources, uh, call centers, software, um, their uh, secondary sales uh, um, data, and uh, the author of this dashboard was su supporting our new dashboard and when this person left the company uh, there was no one who could support uh, these data flows and it uh, may be one or two months it was leaving but there was there were a lot of uh, errors for data updates some miscommunication and really um company has left their trust to this dashboard because of um some maybe sometimes one percent deviation three percent deviation but the data quality uh has dropped no trust for this beautiful dashboard and uh, finally uh <laughs> these analytics uh went back to Excel pivot tables uh, or ad hoc reports and uh, unfortunately this beautiful dashboard has died in a several months after after this person has left so again it has died another one example I will briefly uh, oh, I don't have access uh, to interactive version but in a few words uh, this dashboard contains uh, indicate data from um, campaign ads manager uh, Facebook ads manager Google ad manager and uh, um, the metrics of impressions uh, cost per million click through rate uh, uh, click per video uh, by different channels uh, websites uh, and uh, uh, different marketing campaigns and uh, the target audience uh, was um, chief uh, marketing officer for for any for some car uh, producer and uh, also uh, team of or marketing team and how do you think uh, has this dashboard survived or not just from a uh, first impression or maybe why So um, it looks um, pretty simple. So uh, and we have uh, not so detailed data by any UTM uh, by specific order. It looks uh, 
overview by channels, by platforms, and uh, key indicators. Hmm. You're saying it died. Um, uh, but it uh, it's still living, and uh, of course it uh, so it was not even transformed. Uh, it was there was a lot of different dashboards uh, by specific campaign, specific channel, uh, customer segment, and uh, so it was one of the first dashboards. And uh, now there are about. 20 dashboards by different uh, different projects but this is still living because it's pretty simple and uh, because it has unified data sources it's connected to facebook connected google uh, ad managers and uh, it's it's so simple to maintain this and there is no even no reason to uh, to fix any errors so it's still living because it's simple and uh, has uh, unified data sources so it's um let me check your Yes, and uh, uh, usually it's unpredictable uh, which dashboard will survive because of uh, various uh, factors of human factor, technology factor, uh, or changed business goals. Next project, um, and uh, I really was, so it was a challenging pro project for us and we developed it for uh, one of big four consulting companies and here we have um, open data from Herostat and uh, another uh, open data sources by uh, logistic operations uh, in uh, from european countries uh, all and uh, all over the world so if I select Germany, I can see all the uh, export flows between other countries uh, from Germany to China, to Australia, New Zealand uh, and uh, others. Uh, import operations. Now I'll show export oper import operations. Um, I hope it will work. Well, okay, let's go back to, to export operations. So Germany, the first place, France, the Netherlands, and uh, it's, this is our uh, start page, just mm, to involve our uh, uh, user. And uh, we can go through several pages uh let's start from general kpis and overall uh, european ranking for example i can select any country and look which cargo categories uh for example for Ger germany uh it's a uh, nuclear nuclear reactors um, vehicles electrical machinery if we will select Belgium. Uh, we also have products, food, clothes. Uh, we can see modes of transport, sea, rail, and the, the most popular sea uh, and unknown. And we can switch indicators, dollars, euro, thousands of tons, and uh, for different periods and all these uh, calculations so this CHR indicators uh, indicator is calculating real time 
and uh, because it depends on all the time periods and uh, all these categories that we selected. So it was uh, very sophisticated calculation. Uh, we can look uh, from the another position, not from this region, but uh, from position of um, each country. Here we have Finland, and uh, for each country we have uh, uh, partnering countries for export and import. And uh, even we can launch this. It it was developed about two or three years ago when uh, such uh, visualization bar chart trace. Maybe you remember uh, such bar chart traces for COVID, and uh, we can see how which country uh, becomes a, um, their partner and takes for, for Finland the most um, important partner is Germany. But let me find uh, another country. Oh, here we can look uh, for import. So China. United Kingdom gets to the first, second position for export. I can see how Russian Federation has dropped their position, but there is no Saudi, so such dynamic changes. And uh, we can go down to each subcategory, iron, fertilizers, chemicals, and uh, for example, Poland import, uh, partner for chemicals is Ukraine, Russia, Brazil, Liberia, Czechia, Canada. So we have this dynamic ranking, so it looks interesting. And uh, from another details about cargo. And uh, what's the interesting that it was uh, um, it it was attempt to make um, big data product. So our our client, this consulting company, offered these data solutions, the data solution for their end clients, and they offered them to combine their um, internal data about their sales in different uh, categories and compare their sales to these global trends and uh, analyze their market share and uh, uh, find uh, trends and uh, demand trends and uh, really uh, change their marketing strategy according to this um, external data. And uh, how do you think? Has this um, not even corporate project, it was a it was data product uh, for four big companies for trading companies, manufacturing companies. How do you think has this product uh, launched and uh, survived? Survived. And uh, um, when our client uh, made uh, their where sales, uh, their pre-sales, they faced the problem that they need uh, to match this data uh, with clients' internal data. But uh, the key audience was uh, what was not startups or media companies, there was corporations and all they had their custom ERP system. There was no uh, unified industry solution and the costs of integration were very, very, very high. And uh, uh, for the first clients, we took uh, part of costs for our sales, so we, we we made integration for free and uh, they paid just for subscription. But really uh, this subscription didn't cover 
our integration costs. Uh, but when we increased uh, increased uh, this price for subscription, um, client said that it's too expensive, it's too hard to make integrations, and our IT department will will connect this open data. So data is open. Of course, we have added value that we have enriched this data from different sources and uh, build this visualization. But they said, if we will want, we will connect to all this data and uh, maybe and develop maybe not so beautiful, but uh, we will get Excel pivot tables and some some of them really did this the same in Excel and uh, this data product unfortunately has that and really we spent uh, a lot of time to not even to develop but to design all these presets uh, different so these features uh, to do switchers euro tones dollars average minimal top 10 average a lot of presets but the sophisticated project has that and we even applied this uh, dashboard uh, on information is beautiful award but uh, we didn't uh, get the price uh, the next next project uh, is from um, broker industry it was a small company uh, like family the uh, private private investment company and uh, let me find it how to hide this button that's it is that's uh, that's uh, another one it's dashboard which has con some connection to the stock markets uh, and uh, assets that uh, this company this broker has uh, for different portfolios segments uh, which tickers they have their cash uh, assets value market trends by different segments and uh, uh, yeah, their indi change indicators year to date, quarter to date, month to date, and uh, even uh, day by day, day by day change. And uh, also currency switchers for different uh, segments, cash assets, and they use this uh, dashboard to track all their assets and uh, uh, this lower table it's it uh, the name of broker it's uh, like uh, this indicator this brief uh, uh, name of uh, each uh, person who works in this company and they track uh, their performance and uh, how what's your opinion uh, is this dashboard still living or not And uh, again, uh, um, it it may look uh, outdated and uh, maybe not so um, so really. Uh, we just uh, deployed all their uh, Google Sheets calculations into uh, Power BI. So there's no added uh, analytics, no enriched data. So they were working with Google Sheets and now they 
uh, they still uh, use th this uh, like Power BI uh, view mode, and they still have their stock connectors and uh, Google Sheets with their internal data. And again, because it's uh, simple, and uh, this business model uh, haven't changed, so they work almost in the same model and for long term uh, investments not so volatile and uh, um, this this boring dashboard is still living uh, another one example um, it's uh, executive summary for one uh, engineering company uh, about uh, human resource metrics, but uh, in a finance view. So their uh, the sh wage uh, fund share of uh, this wage fund in revenue by three department: software, consulting, renovation, and really it looks like uh, mm, simple um, PowerPoint slide, but it's updating. Uh, month by month, and it has uh, indicator of uh, target achievement or their uh, budget limit, and so simple indicators and uh, uh, monthly update. And what's your opinion? Is this dashboard still living or not? I agree with you, Zach, that um, this logo takes too much space, but I show you as it was developed uh, several years ago. And of course, it, uh, now I want to redesign everything, but uh, I show uh, as, it, as it really wa was developed. And uh, mm, it was leaving for yeah uh, i agree with you uh narrative some highlights bookmarks and uh, this derbert was leaving about uh six months um but also this company has problem with data um data updates because uh, all this data all these calculations about uh, financial uh, about uh, salary wage fund uh, was calculated manually again because uh, they didn't trust uh, so they has they have problems with IT department and really uh, so IT department developed their own system. Uh, this financial department calculated indicators in Microsoft Excel, and uh, we deployed, we developed this uh, there, but and make a, uh, make integration to this uh, to their data warehouse. But because of war between people from finance and IT. This dashboard again has died because they didn't agree how who will uh, responsible for uh, this monthly updates uh, for several months. We helped this company uh, like uh, free support, but uh, they uh, this they didn't uh, pay for this and uh, really without payments we said okay do it yourself and uh, it crashed uh, after uh, after two months and unfortunately as this simple dashboard uh, which i expected to live for long long years again has dead and the last case uh, the simplest 
uh, it was a company and uh, again they has some pro they they have launched new product new sales process and uh, uh, they didn't they have time to make all the settings in their CRM system and we just started from manually collected data in Microsoft Excel and uh, just released this simple dashboard and uh, we selected any salesperson and uh, analyzed their uh, bottlenecks in the sales process. For example, Alex has balanced sales funnel, he has 16 meetings, presentations, offers, contracts, but Maria uh, has a bottleneck from 24 uh, contacts for cold outreach. She has uh, only eight meetings, but later she has a good conversion. Four presentations, three offers, so in the final stage, but in the uh, early stages of sales funnel, he, she has uh, low performance. Another salesperson, Victor, has good performance in the early stages, cold outreach, meetings, presentations, but he's bad in closing the deals. And the real decision which was made with this dashboard to put them work together. And uh, Victor uh, was warming clients and Maria was closing deals. Or another uh, sales per person, Peter, uh, has no co zero contracts. And the first uh, impression was that he's outsider. But looking at these uh, line charts, we can see that he started later uh, in the first weeks zero 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 but later all this all his uh, uh, trends are uh, uh, growing presentations offers and really one month later he um, exceeded all the goals and signed six contracts and uh, how do you think is it still living or uh, it uh, has that as outdated solution? Yes, uh, I show you uh, an initial example, like uh, really it was developed in uh, several hours and uh, without uh, uh, goals. And uh, later uh, some indicators will go added and uh, some important changes, but it was an MVP and really it uh, launched from the first week. Now it looks uh, not so um, simple, but really it, uh, it's still uh, living, but not even as Excel file. Really it was used as a specification for new dashboard uh, in Power BI. And uh, so this company used the same view uh, but uh, with uh, uh, different uh, improvements. But the major idea and uh, the, this process and uh, uh, this um, approach to analyze these bottlenecks is still living in this company. So uh, it was the last case and uh, really <laughs> It's unpredictable uh, and maybe all these examples, uh, of course, I I selected uh, these stories because they have unpredictable uh, final, 
but I hope it was uh, interesting for you to make your uh, assumptions and uh, look different uh, ways of visualization. Uh, so what I want to say uh, in conclusion, um, of course, I don't uh, say that use just use Microsoft Excel instead of for uh, really uh, big data solutions. Of course, no. But uh, according to my experience, uh, the simpler solutions have more changes chances to survive. And when we start from minimal viable product uh, and uh, sometimes start from Microsoft Excel as a platform uh, for MVP. Really, we have uh, less risks and uh, more chances. So uh, Microsoft Excel still remains uh, the best survival. Um, uh, it has the best um, adapting uh, capabilities to any infrastructures. And uh, of course, with modern uh, Excel tools uh, and uh, advanced uh, data modeling and of course AI features. So that's uh, that's the end. And uh, so you can you may stay in touch, uh, visit our website, my LinkedIn page, or email me if you have any ideas for collaboration uh, or um, if you want to teach your clients, partners, your staff how to make, uh, how to develop really useful dashboards. And uh, now I finish and uh, I'll be happy to answer all your questions. Uh, Alex, I think there's a question in the chat from Zach um, asking if you can please share which visuals you used, for example, the tree of sales that may need to be imported. Um, tree of sales. Uh, tree, you map, uh, you, you mean uh, tree map, uh, let, let me launch my screen again, because I I'm not sure which uh, visual do you mean? There is sales funnel. Uh, Alex, he yeah. says it's the one where you showed the Germany to China sales. Uh huh. Uh, if you mean this, so this is a flow map. It uh, it is a. Uh, visual from App Source Gallery, um, and uh, here we used custom visual. Let me find it uh, in the country section. Here, uh, this bar chart trace. This is the custom visual, but really we uh, find this. Uh, Visual, it has uh, uh, so it open code on a uh, GitHub, and really we have improved some data labels for this dark uh, color theme and uh, white uh, fonts. Uh, if you mean this visual, but uh, the rest of visuals uh, are default Power BI ribbon chart. Uh, table, line chart, uh, tree map by categories with tool tip. So, yeah, I think it was the uh, flow map that Zach was uh, was interested in, uh, if I uh, if I picked up correctly from the chat here. So, um, so there you go. Cool. Um, Andrew's asking, do you have any tips on how to encourage an internal client or client to re-engage on a project after you've lost their enthusiasm? Oh, that's a uh, <laughs> uh, 
good question. I, I need one more hour <laughs> to answer <laughs> it. Uh, really, um, let me let me recall any real example. Uh, so in general, uh, when we have a project uh, not of one dashboard, but we have uh, different uh, stages. For example, um, sales department, uh, human resources department, uh, finance department, and when one of these uh, clients uh, has lost his uh, enthusiasm, and uh, uh, because because he's waiting for for a long time for data preparation uh, or uh, some technical issues, but when he looks uh, at the um, achievements of another department, and uh, he may he he gets envy. <laughs> Uh, so this may be this driver of uh, how to encourage uh, internal client is make a competition between different departments and uh, a competition envy and uh, uh, all the basic uh, negative emotions really uh, can engage uh, internal customer uh, or attract new stakeholder uh, for the project. Awesome. Um, all right. I'm just looking through the chat. I don't see any other questions that are um, are in the chat at this point. If anybody does have a question that they want to ask uh, you and you would prefer to do it by just asking uh, by voice, just, you know, throw up, uh, throw up a hand uh, or something like that. Um, and uh, we'll definitely uh, let Alex have a chance to do so while we're waiting for people to, to think on that. Um, I'm just going to start off with saying, hey, thanks, Alex, again, for coming back and doing this. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really interesting. It's funny because you asked at the very beginning, like, what's your preferred data visualization tool? I'm an Excel guy, so mine's always Excel, and I'm, I'm glad to know there's still a role for Excel and all of this kind of stuff, right? Simple is uh, simple is sometimes better. But, yeah, um, <laughs> Excel is the best survivor. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, right? Because, I mean, you look at what Power BI gives us and that ability to add so many bells and whistles that cross-filter everything. And, and I mean, I, I see a lot of cases where people kind of put on so many different filters that you've got this like this one report to rule them all that can add or do anything except that it gets so complex that people look and go, I can't figure this thing out. So I'm not going to use it. Just give me something I can't change. And uh, it, it's really kind of interesting there on, um, you know, that sometimes simpler is just better, right? I mean, let's, you know, tap into the, I guess, lack of focus or lack of attention that uh, that our audience actually has, right? So um, Andrew says, he liked the reminder, a lot of project success depends on the external context as well. Yeah, so, which is uh, I very true. agree with Andrew. Yeah, so um, Zach, truly hope that models can be imported into Excel in the future. If I'm not exported, it can be imported to Excel to Power BI, but not the other way around, at least not easy. Zach, that is not true. You should look at Monkey Tools because Monkey Tools can import a data model from Power BI back into Excel. Just saying. Um, that's one of the features that I added to the software uh, a couple of years ago. So if you are looking to reverse or to bring things back, you can you should definitely check that out. Um, awesome, uh, fantastic. Well, I, as I say, I don't see any more questions coming in. So um, Alex, thanks again for coming back and doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, it's been a great presentation. I wanna thank everybody for coming and for asking your questions and playing along as we went along here. And um, don't forget that our next meetups for 2024 are open for RSVPs. Uh, we're gonna sign off for this year for the final time, but uh, thanks everyone. I hope you have a, a safe and happy holiday season and great New Year's. Um, as I say, stay safe out there and uh, hopefully we'll see you back here in 2024. Till next time uh, we'll have the video up in the next 24 to 48 hours so thanks again Alex we'll see you thank you sometime in the future